My name is Heidi Wittenberg. I'm a gender affirmation surgeon in San Francisco. Here are some helpful tips for a support team or person um, for post-operative care. Um, I always encourage my patients to bring um, your designated support person to the pre-op visits and post-op visits. However, I understand that a lot of times that's not possible. Some super basic information that is important for you to know it, as a support person is um, to make sure uh, our mutual patient is uh, eating, that they're being fed, they're able to take their medications and have their medications, that you're emptying their Foley bag if they have a Foley, and you're bringing them to their appointments. So that's just the basic needs. If you're here um, preoperatively coming again to the pre-op appointment, there's a shopping list of things um, to obtain going through that shopping list. Uh, with our mutual uh, person, patient, and um, again, showing up for the post-op visits. Uh, two other things to look for are um, if someone's having excessive bleeding and soaking through dressings or pads to uh, call the office. And then the other thing is very common to have fevers because of um, uh, people not taking in full deep breaths after surgery, something we call pulmonary atelectasis. So if um, our mutual patient has uh, a temperature, a fever above 38.0 or 100.4 is to have the patient use uh, the incentive spirometer that they've gone home with and uh, take a Tylenol if they're able to ambulate around the room, have them ambulate, retake their temperature in an hour. If it's still above 38.0 or 100.4, then give the office a call. Um, the other thing, it is imperative for the support person, you, to be around for a minimum of two weeks from um, surgery to the second post-op. That's the most critical time that we need a support person. Ideally, it would be for the whole three weeks post-op, but the critical portion is for two weeks. Also, if there's going to be a relay team, um, to make sure there's no gaps in the relay team who are taking care. And those are the basic 10 tips for 101 tips for a support person. Um, so again, you're just there to make sure if there's any additional needs or transportation, medications, um, food and sustenance, and uh, to be able to have a phone and call. All right, and that will help the recovery be successful. Thank you.